So welcome to um, my video on um, accounting software. Here I post um, Facebook's videos on how you can um, use this um, software to improve your finance and track your cash flow. Today is going to be a very interesting uh, video. Um, I would be sharing full practical tips on how you can use this QuickBooks to manage your property business. Now, your property business might be that you have landlords, you have property owners that you manage their property, and then um, you rent out to tenants, you collect rent from the tenants, you remit part of the rent to the landlord, depending on your agreement, maybe you collect the rent, you charge the tenant agency fee, and you remit the um, rent to the landlord, and you keep the agency fee, which is like a commission, and all that, or you also buy properties from sellers and you sell to buyers and the commissions and all that so what i'm going to discuss here is a whole lot on how you can use this system to manage your property business very very important because a lot of clients have been calling in to ask how they can manage their property how they can use quickbooks to track their finance they want something very simple something not so complex and easy to understand something that can generate a report for them so here I'm going to show you how you can use this system to do that practically. Now, in using QuickBooks, it's very important for you to know who your customers are, who your vendors are. These are the these are the key thing you need to start from, because if you're able to know who your customers are and who your vendors are, it, it helps you to know how to start your setup easily. First, what I'm going to do now is assuming you have different properties in different locations. For instance, I'm going to use Lagos as an instance. We have uh, Ikoi at a region on the island. We have Ikeja as a region on the mainland. So assuming you have properties in Ikoi, you have properties in Ikeja, and these properties are rented out to either corporate or individual tenants, which is the same thing um, on the Ikeja island. How do you set this up and all that? Because I wouldn't advise you to lump the tenants together so that when you go to when you go to your customer list, you just see list of all your customers together. So here we're going to start with grouping. We want to be able to group our tenants by properties. We want to say, oh, these tenants belong to Koyu properties. These are the current occupier of Koyu properties. These are the current occupier of Ikeja properties and all that. So first, we're going to start with our customer setup. Now from here you could see that I already done some a little setup on our uh, customer who are our tenants. So from here you could see we have Ikoi tenants. Now under Ikoi tenants we have Jude and we have Mike. Now the balance here is what Mike is yet to re remit. So under Ikeja tenants, maybe we don't have any. So let's set Ikeja tenant up. Now what you would do is the properties itself is going to be set up as a customer. So when you want to set up the customer, group the tenants uh, which is the customer as the property what i mean is that you're going to categorize them under the properties under uh, under the properties they occupy that's exactly how to do that so here we're going to add a customer called ikeja properties tenants so this is a general name for all the tenants that are occupying ikeja property then we'll now begin to add individual tenants that are occupying ikeja property so let's say we have swiss limited that's one of the tenants probably like an office we have opening balance opening balance means as at when we are doing this setup do we have any receivable from this particular tenant yes they are owing us 230,000 naira. so you could come in and enter 2000 so this is the account receivable for this particular tenant so you're going to set the tenant up as a job so the customer itself will be the name of the property that categorizes all the tenants together so we're using the customer name as the general name for that property then we'll use the job for all the tenants that are occupying that property so here i will enter the office which is the swiss limited then you click ok now when you click ok you could see that we have the first tenant then let's add the second tenant you, so you, the tenant is going to be a job while the property itself is already a customer so you don't have to add them as a customer again because all the tenants is going to be grouped under the property so the tenants um will be it will be, ready, it will be entered as a job while the property itself is going to be entered as a customer so all you need to do is group the job under a cost under a customer 
so the next one i'm going to add now is let me add another one so let's say we have another oil and gas company occupying that property so do we have any outstanding balance from this particular tenant no then we click ok so what, what I've done here is that I've been able to add all the tenants groups as a property so first we we'll say oh we have equity properties 230 who are the tenants occupying equity properties we have oil and gas limited we have Swiss limited we have equity tenants who are the tenants occupying all this uh, all the units in this equity properties we have Jude and we have Mike so this is the first step you need to do which is very very key so we are, we are still discussing this step in setting up uh, your tenants then the other side of it is that though we have added the property here the property here are like a category so that we don't lump all the tenants together it won't be wise for you to see all the tenants grouped together what if I want to generate a report all I need to do is you go to customers and receivable customer balance only, which is like tenants uh, rent due and all that or tenants are standing if you could see you will see that my customer balance somewhere is grouping all my tenants according to the property they occupy first we have equity property tenants these are the tenants of equity property that are owing we have uh, sorry Ikeja then we have equity so when you do this it will be easier for you to see all your tenants and the individual property that they occupy now the second section is how do we now add our property so that when we receive money from this uh, tenant or when we incur expenses on the tenant we should be able to generate a profit and loss for each property let's see how profitable a property is or not to do that you go to list class list now the class list is what you use to group all your properties so you could see that i already have class list of ikeja properties and equity properties why i did that is because if i want to generate my profit or loss i should be able to generate profit or loss by class the profit or loss by class will help me to see all the income you can see we we only have transaction on equity properties alone you can see we have all the commissions we have all the expenses incurred on this property so if you have done similar transaction on um equity properties you probably would have seen them here too so the whole essence of setting up class is that at every point in time when you enter transaction on the system you should be able to map that transaction to the property where it's applicable so that's very important so now let's move to the other section which is the banking section it's a normal thing if you understand how to use quick you to set up your bank account you go to a chart of account you add a new bank here so to add our new bank you click account new you select a bank you go to continue so let's assume that we have a, a account with zenith bank so when they pay us money from rent this is where we're going to receive the money and we'll receive the money we also need to pay part of the money to the landlord so here it's the balance in this bank account so i have my bank account set up in the system already so this is my bank account and all that so i think these are the basic setup uh, we need to do first you add the tenants you group the tenant under the properties they occupy the second is to add the property as a class so that you can uh, classify all transactions to buy properties you say oh this transaction is applicable to each property or not the other one is the bank account now an important area again is the landlord itself who you're going to pay so you're going to set up your landlord I, I like the landlord to normally would say vendor but I really don't use vendor I use all that because if I want to pay my landlord um, I, I have to set it up to on the system so and landlord do they render services to me so I rather use as all that so if I want to set up my landlord all I need to do is I will add new at the point of adding new I select order I don't select as vendor and all that so my I believe vendor app service providers and all that so I just use orders to set up my landlord so here I'll enter the name of the landlord so let's assume the name of the landlord or the property owner is XYZ family let's say it's family owned property so I'll click OK so I've been able to set up for this now let's start the transaction properly for instance we have a new tenant coming in and this tenant is occupying equity properties what are we going to do we're going to add the tenant under equity properties so you go to customer we have equity properties here so how do you add the tenant you add it as a job not as a customer so you click add job so what is the name of this customer the name of this customer is big arrow tech that's a company 
So, do we have any previous transaction with them? No. What property are they occupying? Ecoe, they are Ecoe tenants. Then you click OK. First, you could see we've added them. No transaction, nothing. Now, the second is how much are they supposed to pay as rent? Let's assume that uh, they're supposed to pay us 5 million naira for 5 years. They want, to pay, they want to occupy a property. They want to rent apartments for, and they want to pay for 5 years and all that. So, what are we going to do? We're going to receive that payment from them. It's very key. You're going to receive that 5 million naira from them. So, to receive the 5 million naira from them, you go to receive payments. So, this receive payment will help you receive the money from that tenant. Received from who? Big Arrow Tech. So, you must select the tenant that's paying for that. How much is it? 5 million naira. So, you enter 5 million naira here. What are they paying? They are paying by check or cash, whatever method they are using to pay. You need to track, you need to enter on the preference. Now, deposit to. We are paying into Zenit Bank. You select Zenit Bank, then you click save and close. Now, this is going to create a credit because we have received money but no invoice has been created. So, this is like an advanced payment from them. So, here you click OK. So, you've been able to receive the money from Big Arrow Tech. Now, the next is assuming. We want to create an invoice for one month if you're going to be creating an invoice for let's say the invoice is for a year and the rent for a year is one million euro so that means the or the the money they paid is for five years so what we're going to do now is to create an invoice for the one year portion of that five million naira so you come down you select big arrow tech here item so already we also have our item. You should be able to set up your item, which is going to be um, your rent, your repair and maintenance, agency fee, and all that. So here we we'll enter rent first. Then second, assuming we have a charge, probably like agency fee, you enter agency fee here too. So what is the rent for that property? So if the rent is one million naira, for instance, you enter the rent of one million naira here. Now, with this invoice, I can as well customize this invoice. Oh, I don't call it quantity. Probably the quantity could represent the number of years we are actually creating this invoice for. So I'll go to format, custom data layout, then change the year, change the quantity to year because that fits my line of business. So I will come here, I'll change it to years. Then this rate, I will call it fees. Or rent. Then I'll click. So this property is this class here. I will call it. Then I'll click OK. So you can see here. So as you were, um, this rent is for one year. You enter one year. So description you could say then invoice. One year. So, on which property? Ikoyi property. So, we also have a service charge of five percent. So, which is five percent of this? On which property? To Ikoyi property. So, this is very very important. So, you review. So, this is what the invoice is. So, this invoice should be deducted. That the value on this invoice will be deducted from the advance payment made earlier on. So when I click save and close here, you can see this customer has available credit. That's the five million we received initially. Do you want to apply this and all that? You click yes. So if you click there, so you can see it is the balance after we apply this one million and fifty thousand naira. Then I'll click done. So you can see invoice is already paid. So we have already received the money and that's all. So if I go to reports and I check my profit or loss by class, you will see that our property has been updated. You could see right now. So we have a Keja property, we have Ikoyi property. Why it's showing Ikoyi property was that the class we selected for this transaction is Ikoyi. Now out of this one million euro that uh, just um, created an invoice for. We also need to remit money to the landlord and all that. So the tenant paid for five years and all that. So let's assume it's an assumption. We are paying three million naira to the landlord, for instance. So that's going to be the owner's payment. So we we'll come down here. You go to write check. So with this write check, you go to 
enter the amount due to the amount to pay to the landlord so here you go to xyz family then three so this is where we we'll select owner's payment uh, so you can also track that owner's payment too to a class which is very important so equal you properties this is in respect of who big arrow tech so you untick this then you select the date and then you click save close so this is very simple and straightforward so if i come back here to profit or loss by class you will see right now that you could property is now updated so we collected the rent of this amount then this is what we're paying the landlord and here you can see the so here you're looking at the profit or loss on each of this property so it's very cool so if i want to check how my balance sheet looks like to i could as well go back to um report so that you could see your balance sheet is straightforward and all that so for instance we already have security deposit here too if tenants make a security deposit and like an advance payment how do you key it in now this is the previous transaction i have already done before then let's see how to record that too here you go to record deposit now security deposit is more like a, like a, a payment made by a tenant and it's a liability because at the end of the period you could refund the money and all that so it's like just like a damaged fee or the order about so you go to receive from big r tech from this which account is it is, is a liability account so you select security deposit the money is being paid into zenith bank memo you could just enter being payment for security deposit and all that the payment method if it's by cash you select cash then class security deposit on which property equally properties how much is it thirty thousand naira so you enter thirty thousand naira too then you click save and close and all that so if i go back to my reports here i should be able to see that my security deposit is now hundred thousand so if i double click on this to this will give me a breakdown of my so i can also use this as a report now that so you could see we have payment from a first tenant payment from second tenant and all that this is from my this is from br tech and all that so this is very very straightforward and simple so you could use this to manage your property effectively so from the ones occupied by tenants and the ones you're selling and all that so wherever it is but in setting up your customers for a uh, property that you set up right into your tenant you don't have to use a job you could as well just create them as a customer you add their name but for properties that are occupied by tenants you need to set up the property as a customer then add all the tenant as a job so that it will be easy for you to track the tenant under a property so that when you go to your report customers on display you can't see you should be able to see how this uh, uh so you move to see the tenant that are occupying each of these properties so that you don't have everything lumped up to get that so this is just a summary of how i've been using quickbooks to set up um a property business and how it's been very very seamless and flexible okay